weeks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Next on Primetime, turning himself in. A teenager accused in the death of eight-year-old Sequoia Turner has turned himself over to police, but still insists he didn't kill her. We're watching closely as coronavirus cases rise. Will Governor Kemp extend the restrictions before they expire tonight? And later, a five-year-old's parents are reeling after she was diagnosed with a rare genetic disorder. Now they're facing their biggest fears to search for a cure. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We have severe thunderstorms out there this evening. Our latest warning here in Meriwether County, and you can see how that line of strong storms extends up into the Atlanta area right now. But right now, the warning is in Meriwether County with this cell moving to the west at 15 miles per hour. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing winds up to 60 miles per hour. Some large hail, and you can tell a lot of lightning. Uh, it'll put it uh, moving it to the west at 15 miles per hour. We'll put it in Hogansville at around 8:30 or so. Right? Right around 831. So it is time to find your safe place right now. There is so much lightning associated with this particular uh, cell, right around 113 strikes in the past 15 minutes. And you can see how that lightning extends right into the Atlanta area right now, uh, bringing in a lot of lightning here in town inside the perimeter. We're seeing some 50 strikes with this line of storms in the last 15 minutes. So a lot of heavy rain associated with as well. Also over into the Carrollton area stretching up towards Bremen. Frequent lightning. This is dangerous stuff. You need to seek shelter inside and even across Lake Lanier. We've had some lightning definitely seeing some heavy downpours there right now. So we're seeing that heavy rain. These rainfall rates coming in at around three inches per hour. If it were to sit here an hour, most of these cells have been moving at a speed of around 15 miles per hour and we have a chance for thunderstorms yet tonight. Storm Prediction Center not giving us a chance for severe and yet we're seeing these isolated severe storms popping up. So uh, we're not out of the woods yet. We're continuing to track them throughout the evening hours and into tomorrow where we have a chance for thunderstorms once again. And those chances linger into the weekend. In fact, they're going to be going up as we head into next week. We'll have more details on the timing of that coming up. Samantha, thank you. First tonight, President Trump has wrapped up his address here in Atlanta and is now heading back to Washington, D.C. He was in the city touting a new infrastructure policy. 11 Lives Hope Ford was at the UPS hub near Hertzfield Jackson International Airport this evening where he spoke. She reports that the president got the buy in on this plan from UPS, which is based here in Atlanta and is a major employer.
President Trump called his announcement a historic breakthrough that cuts through mountains of red tape in Washington. The president's administration announced that they are streamlining the approval process for projects like buildings, bridges, and highways. And Trump said the first project to benefit from this shorter process is Georgia's expansion of I-75. The expansion is meant to add 77 new lanes of commercial highway, which will cut down on that traffic. Now, he made the announcement at the UPS Air Craft Center here in Atlanta, which is important because those UPS drivers and others delivering freight will benefit from the expansion. Now, here we're going to show you where the president is comparing the old process of getting projects reviewed to the new process, which he says will take two years or less. The new project process is highlighted in the chart closest to him, and you'll see the old process compared to the older one on the right of him. The difference is that and many of those steps, you had to wait before you could even think about going to the next one, and you had to get full approvals. Any one of those colors where there was a problem or a rejection meant it was dead. And now you go through this very simple but very comprehensive solution. This investment in our roads and bridges helped reduce congestion and open up the bottlenecks, which makes it easier to get the packages where they need to go. More importantly, safe for drivers like myself, because we all know the most important stop of the day is when I get back home to her and my two beautiful kids. And you also just heard at the end there from one of those UPS employees that has continued to make deliveries here throughout this pandemic. Now, Trump ended his announcement today by saying his administration is also working on improving the port of Savannah. And he says he wants this shorter process to make sure that American infrastructure is the envy of the entire world. President Trump's visit to Georgia comes at a time when polls have shown the president could lose the state to Joe Biden. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has been looking at the issues and the voting trends. With protests roiling Georgia's cities and suburbs, and with a pandemic threatening lives and an economic downturn threatening incomes, the 2020 presidential election is giving Georgia voters almost too much to consider as they weigh whether President Trump should get another term. We know President Trump is going to win Georgia. Cobb Republican Chairman Jason Shepard says swing voters see the president as the good guy in a time where he says extremists are driving protests. Black Lives Matter as a movement is, is a very important to talk about. Um, of course, as a Republican, the movement is very different from the organization, uh, which basically spouts Marxist ideology. Democrats say BLM is a biracial grassroots movement, which, like the pandemic, they say the president is unable to grasp. As thousands poured into the streets to march for black lives, Trump has called us thugs, gas police, peaceful protesters, and sick the U.S. military on American citizens. Yet in Georgia, from the governor down, Republicans hold every elected statewide office. Republicans have been winning Georgia's presidential electoral votes for 56 years, starting with Barry Goldwater in 1964. Georgia Democrat Jimmy Carter broke the streak twice, but since 1984, only Bill Clinton has interrupted it, barely in 1992. Even Republicans Bob Dole and Mitt Romney easily took Georgia. But Donald Trump barely broke 50 percent when he won Georgia in 2016, and polls have shown Trump tied at best with Democrat Joe Biden this year. President Trump's visit to Georgia signals less than his advertising purchase in the state last month, indicating his need to keep Georgia in the GOP's column in 2020. We know that Donald Trump's incompetence, his failure to care, is going to be on display from now through November. 2020 is going to be Donald Trump's year in Georgia. How President Trump fares in Georgia can also trickle down to other contests, from two contested U.S. Senate races to a couple of contested congressional races to the Georgia House of Representatives in this most unusual of election years. New information tonight. We are learning that the governor has extended a COVID-19 executive order that was set to expire tonight at 1159. The measure will now expire July 31st at 1159, going through the end of the month here. It requires social distancing, bans groups of more than 50 people unless you can maintain six feet between everyone. It outlines mandatory criteria for businesses to operate and requires the medically fragile and people living in long-term care facilities to shelter in place. Now, as we have just received this 
decision. State public health leaders are reporting a dramatic rise in hospitalizations linked to COVID-19 today. The Georgia Department of Public Health reported 417 new hospitalizations. That's twice as many as yesterday and the highest one day total since the state started reporting this information. As of today, there are 2,786 people in the hospital sick with the virus. Overall, the state reported an additional 3,871 new coronavirus cases today, the second highest increase to date. A teen accused in the death of 80-year-old Sicoria Turner has now turned himself in to APD. 19-year-old Julian Conley is facing charges of murder and aggravated assault. This comes on the same day as Turner's private funeral. 11 Alive's Joe Hankey was there when Turner... Uh, to, uh, when, when he was turned in and he still says that he is innocent. They are, they're saying that he was there at the time of the shooting but did not pull a trigger even though he had a gun on him. Now Atlanta police earlier today confirmed they had taken out a murder arrest warrant for a 19 year old in this case in connection to Sequoia Turner's uh, murder. He is uh, Julian Connolly is that teenager. His attorney Jackie Patterson, he stopped moments ago and talked with us. He said this arrest is retaliation because his client was named as a person of interest in this case, but has not cooperated with police. If they had evidence that he killed this child, they would have certainly made an arrest before now, but they decided that once I identified him as the person in that picture and we wouldn't cooperate, then they decided let's show him. We're going to issue a murder warrant. And after stopping to talk with us, Patterson and his client, Julian Connolly, they walked inside APD headquarters behind me where Connolly was arrested. That arrest taking place only hours after Sequoia Turner's funeral ended. Oh, I fly away. Inside New Calvary Mission Baptist Church, family and friends of eight-year-old Sequoia Turner filled the pews and remembered a young life lost. Sequoia's mother and brothers gathered enough strength to read a poem in her honor. They say there's a reason. They say that time will heal. But neither time nor reason will change the way I feel. No one knows my heart aches. And Pastor Gregory Sutton simply asked the church to support Sequoia's family during an unimaginable struggle. A lot of folks say, well, I know what you're feeling. You don't know what they're feeling unless you've been through this. All we can do is pray and ask God for comfort. Sicoria was shot and killed in southeast Atlanta on July 4th. Atlanta police investigators say a group of armed men had set up a roadblock near the Wendy's where Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed by Atlanta police in June. According to APD, when the car Sicoria was in tried making a U-turn, at least one person in the group fired their gun and Sicoria was hit. Atlanta police later released these photos from a nearby security camera of a person of interest. The person in the pictures identified by his attorney as 19-year-old Julian Conley. The teen now labeled as a suspect by APD and facing charges of felony murder and aggravated assault. Conley's attorney Jackie Patterson talked with 11 Alive anchor Ron Jones earlier this week. He was on the scene of that shooting and he saw what happened, but he did not at any time shoot at that vehicle. Can he identify the folks who pulled the trigger? From my client's perspective, he said no. In Atlanta, police previously released a video clip of another person. They said they needed to help identifying and at the time we're calling a person of interest in this case. We've reached out to Atlanta police multiple times to ask them if that person has been identified or cleared in this case or if they still need help finding them. No response from APD to those repeated requests. Connolly now being booked into the Fulton County Jail tonight. He's expected to make his first court appearance tomorrow, according to Patterson. Meanwhile, Patterson, he held that impromptu press conference as he was heading into APD headquarters here. Next on primetime, a five-year-old's rare illness has drastically cut down her life expectancy. But instead of giving in, her parents are going above and beyond to try to find a cure. And don't forget, we are streaming, as always, right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe and get it on the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in primetime after this break. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. 
the things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory disease. A local family is learning to cope with a devastating diagnosis while stuck in quarantine. Caitlin Ross reports after years of searching for answers, five-year-old Hayden's family is now trying to understood what they found. She loves music. She sings even though she can't sing the words now. Hayden Fowler has always had a beautiful voice, whether she's singing or laughing. She has always been hilarious. She has the best like outbursts and comebacks. But over the past few years, those comebacks have slowed as Hayden is losing her ability to speak. She says mommy, she says baby. Her mom, Carrie, knew something was wrong by the time Hayden was one. But when she was evaluated by the state, they told her Hayden's delays weren't anything to worry about. Over the next few years, Carrie took Hayden to one doctor after the next. She was given a diagnosis of severe autism, but Carrie pushed for a consultation with a geneticist. At the appointment, the doctor commented on Hayden's thick eyebrows and hair, telling her mom she had coarse facial features. They ran blood work for family of rare disorders that Carrie looked up online. I'm a researcher and I don't like surprises, and I just knew she looks just like all the other kids with it. Hayden's facial features, her speech regression and sleeping problems all started to make sense, but it was the worst sort of sense imaginable. The five-year-old was diagnosed with San Filippo syndrome, a rare, aggressive, and deadly genetic disorder. A form of dementia or Alzheimer's for children. She proceeds to tell us that there is no cure. Doctors say Hayden will keep regressing, losing her ability to talk, walk, and eat. A typical lifespan for children diagnosed with San Filippo is between 12 and 20 years old. Hayden's parents have started raising money for research to find a cure. Even though she's terrified of heights, Carrie and her husband are set to skydive to raise awareness about the disease. It seems so minuscule now compared to my child being diagnosed with a disease that has no cure. We just want Hayden to know how much she's loved. Carrie says the outpouring of love and support their family has received since the diagnosis has been incredible, but they're still in quarantine because of COVID-19, so it's been really difficult to be alone. Well, we've been tracking severe thunderstorms this evening and our warning in Meriwether County just expired, but we still have plenty of strong storms out there that are causing some problems with gusty damaging winds, a frequent lightning, as well as some large hail in some of these. Uh, they've been particularly active here on the south side, stretching from Upson County uh, on up towards Fayette County. And we had a severe thunderstorm warning on this particular cell that's now north of LaGrange range, but it brought in quite a bit of lightning and even some hail. We had storm reports here in Troop County of some hail damage to some cars as they were struck by golf ball size hail, and that was at State Route 403 and Hines Road. A car was reported dented as well as having a cracked windshield, so very scary to get caught in a downburst of hail when you're in a vehicle like that. Dangerous as well. Uh, here we still have some hail tracks showing up just east of Gay where those uh, the hailstones are over an inch in diameter. So we do have some large hail out there tonight, as well as frequent lightning here in the center of town in Atlanta. It is still rumbling with that 
uh, with those thunderstorms producing frequent lightning strikes here inside the perimeter. Right now, as we query this whole area of thunderstorms, we're at 25 strikes in the past 15 minutes. It was up around 50 at my last check, so that's a good sign. It could be weakening at this point, but still a lot of lightning over towards Carrollton, just north of Bremen here. We've had thunderstorms moving across Lake Lanier, heading towards Silver City right now. So it is a very active night as these systems move, as these storms move from the southeast to the northwest. The atmosphere is moistened up. Boy, it happened quickly, didn't it? We were dry the last couple of days, but that gives us a chance for general thunderstorms tonight and into tomorrow. Right now, the storm prediction keeping storm prediction center keeping that marginal chance up around the Nashville area. So we have a chance for general thunderstorms as we head through tonight. So we'll continue to see those along with the frequent lightning, some heavy downpours as well as gusty winds. Someone reporting uh, just outside of Sweet Auburn area, some street flooding there within the past hour. So these downpours are definitely heavy. So as we head into the next few hours, moving from the south to the north, just as they are right now, once we get towards midnight, things should start to taper off for the most part. And then once we get into tomorrow, we'll end up seeing those clouds billowing up during the afternoon, producing some showers after lunchtime and in through the evening commute, as well as through the evening, more heavy downpours could be expected expected a 40% chance on Thursday getting into our Friday about a 30% chance that we'll see some of those heat of the day storms later in the afternoon and into the evening hours and then guess what that sets us up for a, an unsettled weekend uh, a 30% chance Saturday 40% chance as we head into Sunday and Monday a 50% chance Tuesday as well we have a 50% chance notice how widespread it is and notice the direction of the wind whenever we get winds out of the south it brings it across those warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico that takes our dew points up that takes our humidity up and when we see the heat like we're seeing right now that uh, brings in the thunderstorm so an active week ahead we do believe all next week we'll have a chance for those storms so we enjoyed our little break while we had it but now the storms are back 40 percent chance on our Thursday during the afternoon and evening 30 percent chance on Friday we'll have a 30 percent chance on our Saturday as well and we'll continue with that chance as we head into the middle of next week you might have seen some posts online recently linking a popular furniture site to human trafficking. Next on Primetime, our verified team is fact-checking the, the conspiracy theory here. To 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Claims are spreading online linking seemingly overpriced items on a furniture website to human trafficking. But is there any evidence? Jason Puckett with our Verify team is looking at the facts. Up front, we're calling this a conspiracy theory. And as we break down these claims, I want you to notice how this whole theory depends on cherry picked information and how every time something is debunked or proven false, a new claim pops up. Let's start with the basics. This all went viral after a reddit.com post, quote, is it possible Wayfair is involved in human trafficking or are these just extremely overpriced cabinets? Now this post shows four cabinets on wayfair.com ranging from 12 to $14,000 and it draws attention to their names. Well, within hours, these claims started popping up as well. Internet sleuths looked into the names of the cabinets and found that in each instance, there was a matching missing person case. This appears off-putting, but our research showed it's not as sinister as it seems. First, let's talk about these girls. This article claims Samaya Muman was reported missing last year, and there was a $13,000 cabinet named Samaya on Wayfair. But Samaya wasn't in the Ohio missing persons database. She actually made a video about all of this herself, where she explains she was never missing and that that article has been removed. How are you gonna post about me being missing? You don't even know me. So the claim linking Samaya to the storage cabinet is false. And it wasn't the only one. Mary Durrett was found safe in 2017, and Samara Duplessis was found safe in May. Our research actually showed that most of the links to missing persons are provably false. But what about the names, you may ask? The Duplessis pillow, for instance. That's not a typical product name, right? Well, it actually is typical on Wayfair. If you search Duplessis, you find rugs, tables, pillows, statues, lamps, and more, all with Duplessis in the name. And no, Wayfair didn't change these names after these claims came out. We checked archived pages and these products existed first. When we looked deeper into Wayfair's naming, we realized it's not hard to make a viral post like this. My last name, for instance, Puckett, isn't a common product name, but it is on Wayfair. I found tables, dressers, lamps, even beds with my last name. And if I do a Google search for Puckett Missing, I find three different missing persons with my same last name on the first page alone. Combine these results and boom, I have a Puckett Missing Persons case linked to a Wayfair Puckett product. It may seem weird to have personal names on Wayfair products, but the claim that it's linked to sex trafficking is false. Try this with your own name. There are more claims here and you can check out our breakdowns online. But while we can keep pointing out why this theory doesn't add up and is using false claims, we can't answer the big question. Why did these pillows and cabinets cost so much money on Wayfair? So far, the company has only said that they were incorrectly priced and has taken them down. But without a deeper explanation, more claims will likely pop up. Think twice though before you share those. So far, there's no evidence that strange pricing on a website is linked to sex trafficking and all the claims so far have turned out false. If you see a claim online and you have questions, you can email it to us. You can also reach us on Facebook or Twitter. So to come as coronavirus and uh, excuse me, as conversations continue about race and injustice amid the coronavirus pandemic, we are still asking people all over the country what is your role? The answers next on Primetime. Workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical. Well, it is an active night here on the radar. You can see all of the lightning that we're still experiencing tonight. So slowly but surely, we expect to see these start to dissipate as we head in after sunset. Things start to cool down a little bit. These are definitely fueled by the heat and humidity out there. No active warnings at the moment, but we have had numerous warnings throughout the afternoon and evening. Uh, primarily for the heavy rain, the gusty winds and the frequent lightning that we have seen. But we've also had some large hail with some of these storms, too. So moving through the Atlanta area now, right through the center of town, we have a line that stretches really from about Doraville, stretching down towards East Point with some frequent lightning here and some very heavy downpours. Uh, we've been listening to the rumbling all evening outside above our 11 Alive headquarters. Right now within the perimeter or so, we have about 14 strikes in the past 15 minutes a little outside the perimeter there but as I extend the query over towards Douglasville you can see where this has really started to flare up in the past 15 minutes or so uh, from Douglasville southward where we have uh, many strikes dozens of strikes of lightning right now as well as some very heavy downpour so it's time to make sure everybody is inside a secure structure these storms are capable of producing uh, some very strong gusty winds too we've had numerous reports of trees down with these gusty winds and the heavy rain also have some of these stronger storms moving pretty much due north here up towards Yorkville at the moment. They're going to continue that northerly path. And we have these that are moving kind of in a little bit of a, a bow shape, moving from Lake Lanier up to the northwest with a lot of lightning on the western end of that flank. So we're going to continue to watch these storms move from southeast to northwest for the next few hours. And then after the daytime heating starts to wane, we should start to see these storms dissipate once we get towards uh, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night things will start to quiet down. But in the meantime, we do have a chance for general thunderstorms tonight. The chance for a better chance for severe off to our southwest. And then tomorrow, the better chance will be off to our northwest up around uh, central Tennessee, the Tennessee Valley. And we'll have that chance for thunderstorms redeveloping during the afternoon and evening once again. So we'll time those out for you coming up in just a few minutes. Sam, thank you. There are important conversations happening right now about race, leading people to ask themselves, what is my role and where do we go from here together after weeks of protests? The conversations are a starting point and our Atticus team set out to hear from people about their part and their answers were all very different. I can't breathe!
build this country basically for free. I stand with Black Lives Matter so much. You know, you guys are creating a hostile environment here. Washington, D.C. Bozeman, Montana. Between Texas and uh, Georgia. I'm a student. I'm an archaeologist. I'm a herpetologist. My role in the movement is to define and define my voice. Is to educate. I create classes programs and learning opportunities to support people through their journey of anti-racism. I come from a place where I'm very privileged. I'm a white woman, I'm straight. I don't think there's much I, as an individual, need to do other than encourage conversation. I'm not racist, so, you know, what's the rule? I, I saw this stuff in history books. I never thought I would be, I would have to be on the front line. Please call the cops. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. After what happened to Christian Cooper, we wanted to highlight Black Birders. We went with calling it Black Birders Week. We wanted to see um, people who look like us enjoying the outdoors. And we wanted to show people like, hey, look, we occupy these spaces as well. I had also been arrested for allegedly spending a counterfeit $20 bill. My experience with the police was very, very different than Mr. Floyd's. I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just write about my experience really briefly. It's had 2 million likes and uh, 600,000 retweets. Um, and as I understand it, that's a lot. 75 things that white people can do for uh, racial justice. It actually started out as a list for myself. Um, and then I said, well, if I have this list, I might as well share it. It takes so much black death and so much gruesome, horrendous dehumanization of black life for the white collective to notice what we've been saying all this time. To me, at least, race is simply just the color of someone's skin. Like, it has nothing to do with who they are as a person. Systemic racism. I don't think we have systemic racism. Yes, there are racist people out there, but we do not in this country have a systemic racism problem. And then there's this notion that there's this white privilege, but there really isn't. I'm not abusing black people. Why should I feel guilty about it? This moment, it's not happening because of celebrities. It's not. It's happening because of the millions of protesters around the world who have said, enough's enough. We really want people to, to know, to listen, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we just want to feel safe when we go outside. We we don't want to feel like, um, you know, is this the last time I'm I'm gonna be leaving my house. In my lifetime, I've not seen a moment such as this. And I'm so terrified that not enough will change. To be a voice, not an echo, but a voice. That's my role in this movement. And yes, it is a movement. 
We want to keep these conversations going. We want to keep you engaged in this. Right now on our 11 Live YouTube page, you can find a playlist with individual interviews answering this same question. That's youtube.com slash 11 Alive. Student athletes are back on campus at UGA. Next week, basketball players will be on the court getting instruction from coaches for the first time since March. The dogs missed a lot of important time together over the last couple of months, but as Alex Glaze shows us, they are excited to be back. In a normal world, we'd have had four and a half to five weeks of spring, and, and we'd have had a full summer. This summer has been anything but normal. There's nothing normal, obviously, about this summer. It, there's nothing even remotely close to normal when it would come to how you would build your team. On July 20th, Georgia coaches will have the opportunity to work with their players on the court for the first time since the SEC tournament was canceled on March 12th. We're just trying to make it as, as, uh, as positive and as uh, encouraging, but most importantly, as thorough as it can be in helping them develop into it. An entire spring and over a month of summer work has been missed. Time that has proven to be huge in player development in the past. Nick Claxton got so much better last spring inside of those four and a half weeks of work with, with what he did in the weight room, what he did outside, what he did uh, with us on the court, and what he did extra. That when he left here to start working out for the pro teams, I mean, like it was. It, it was not shocking whatsoever that, that the NBA was that much more excited about him based on where he was at. He just attacked the spring. As for what to expect in the 2020 season, Crean is in no rush to make any guesses. Don't be in a rush. Listen to the right people. All right? The information is changing rapidly, and uh, let's go with that. And, and to me, that, that's how I've tried to look at it. None of us know what's going to happen. I mean... I mean, I could call five different coaches right now and get at least, at least three, potentially five, but at least three different ideas on when we're going to start the season. Next on Primetime, no more time to wait. The deadline to file your taxes is here, but some of you still have some questions, so our financial expert is answering them for you next. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. 
because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Today is the tax deadline. You got that extension. We hope you haven't forgotten about it, but if you did, here's your reminder. Some people still have questions about filing their taxes this year, so to answer them, we brought in our financial analyst, Andrew Poulos. Andrew, you have had a very busy day. You joined us for the morning and afternoon shows, and now you're back. We're so grateful for that. But still, the questions keep on coming, so let's get right to it. We're going to jump into the first one. This person asks uh, what they should do if they need to file for an extension. Uh, if you need to file for an extension, you can go online, uh, either use a software or go directly to the IRS website and file it electronically so you can get filing confirmation. If you have to file it by mail, you're going to fill out Form 4868 and send it uh, to the IRS. You can download that form as well. Uh, from the IRS website, but generally if you file it electronically, that's going to be your easiest way to get it done for today. All right, so another person wants to know if they do file for an extension, when will they actually uh, be able to have those taxes to be due? If you file for an extension, this, the extended deadline is still October 15th, which is the traditional extension deadline uh, when we are in a calendar of April 15th as the filing date. So nothing's changed. Uh, at this point for October 15th. You, you just have a few less uh, months now since it's been pushed from April to July. Uh, but if you file today, just be aware that you have literally, what, about 10, 12 weeks to file your return uh, timely. All right, so this person wants to know, where's the money? They said they filed electronically in April, but they haven't received their refund yet. What's going on there? Yep, I've heard a few of these situations, Aisha. Um, probably just some backlog. Obviously, the, uh, the IRS was shut down as uh, many businesses were and other agencies uh, due to COVID. Uh, so, however, they've opened up. Their phone lines are open. They might be slow and it might be difficult to get through, uh, but I would encourage that person to call in and inquire and get a status update. Uh, if they filed back in March or April and they haven't received their refund, they definitely need to check on it, but it's just probably backlog right now. All right, because e-file usually takes about two weeks, so it's been quite the delay. All right. It, it is, but we've had uh, returns we've e-filed, one specifically that our client still hasn't gotten the money, and it was e-filed back in March. Okay, well, there you go. You have all the answers you need tonight, but if you need more resources for completing your taxes, we have them for you in our story on 11alive.com or on our app. Just look for this headline. Well, we've had numerous warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings tonight, but there are no warnings now. And it looks like overall, when you look at the big picture, things are not as active as they were just about an hour ago. But still, we have some very powerful thunderstorms out there here across the west side of town near Douglasville, near Six Flags. Look at all of the lightning here. I mean, this is tremendous. 113 strikes stretching from about Powder Springs down towards, down towards uh, Fair Play. So we're definitely seeing a lot of lightning out there still. Atlanta, the lightning is tapering off from where it was earlier, but we still have 18 strikes in this area that's pretty much inside the perimeter. Still some heavy downpours here as well, stretching from uh, really the Emory area all the way over to the southwest side. So we're going to continue to see that, and they're moving to the northwest at around 15 miles per hour. So. I think we're going to have a couple more hours of this before everything starts to clear a bit. Also heading up towards Rockmore, uh, Rockmart, we do have frequent lightning with some heavy downpours stretching from Yorkville uh, down towards Interstate 20. And we're still seeing that activity moving north of Lake Lanier uh, towards Ball Ground. It's kind of expanding to the northwest. So Ball Ground probably starting to hear that thunder right now. And this line of heavier rain moving up towards Juneau. Some reports from our storm trackers uh, of getting as much as two inches out of these storms as they move on through. So plenty of moisture there. 
In fact, as we look at the Doppler estimate, uh, easily as these storms moved over Atlanta and over North Georgia, dropping some inch to even an inch and a quarter, even though they didn't hang around long, they had a lot of moisture associated with them. Storm reports coming in as well here in Fayette County, a couple of wind damage reports being reported in uh, in Fayetteville. We had a report of a tree down on Allenwood Road in Fayetteville after some strong thunderstorm wind gusts there and also power lines reported down at McDonough Road uh, as well. So we're looking at the storms continuing that northwest movement during the next hour or two. We still have a chance for general thunderstorms tonight and into tomorrow. Nothing organized in terms of severe, so we're not going to see like a, a, a complete line moving through, but it'll be very similar to what we saw tonight. So we'll continue to see frequent lightning with these storms as well as some heavy rain and gusty winds. So they're moving to the north, and as we head after sunset, we'll start to lose that trigger mechanism, that lift in the atmosphere. So by midnight, things should be quieting down a bit, so we won't have to put up with this all night long. By tomorrow morning, we'll have clouds around to start, some fog possible in our valley. And then once we get to the heat of the day again during the afternoon, showers and storms popping up a 40% chance. So pretty good coverage tomorrow, much like we had today. And we'll continue to see that as we head through the evening hours as well. Friday starts out dry. We may have some fog around, though, with the standing moisture. And then we'll see those thunderstorms starting up as we head into the afternoon. I think we'll see a little less coverage on Friday. We have that 30% chance of showers and storms on Friday. So it's a 40% chance on Thursday. Temperatures in the low 90s once again. Getting up into the mid 90s as we head into Friday with that 30% chance of showers and storms. It's going to be a hot, sultry weekend. Temperatures in the mid 90s, but it's going to feel like we're about 100 to 105. And those rain chances on the increase over the weekend should be around 40% chance on Sunday. And then next week, yes, we have that chance again. In fact, it goes up to about a 50% chance. It looks like we're going to see a good solid 50% chance Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for those afternoon and evening storms, some of which could have heavy downpours. So it is that time of year where we just have to be prepared to take cover when these storms start to pop up. And we'll be right back after this very brief break to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, 
and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergency. Most of the focus of the November election will be on the showdown between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. No matter which way that goes, the battle for control of Congress will be important too, with the coronavirus pandemic and high unemployment likely to still be issues into the new year. Also at stake within the next four years is the possible future of the U.S. Supreme Court. Democrats control the House with 233 seats to the Republicans' 197. One seat is held by former Republican Justin Amash, who is now a libertarian. Four seats, formerly held by the GOP, are vacant. To ensure they keep control, Democrats must have a net loss of no more than 15 seats. For Republicans to win control, they would need a net gain of 16, plus win back those five other non-Democratic seats. In the Senate, Republicans have a 53 to 45 advantage, but there are two independents, Bernie Sanders and Angus King, who caucus with the Democrats. To ensure control of the Senate, the GOP must have a net loss of no more than two seats. Democrats would need a net gain of four seats to gain control if you include Sanders and King. But remember, the vice president acts as the tie-breaking vote on bills in the Senate, so a 50-50 split means the advantage goes to the president's party. This is potentially key for the makeup of the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Breyer are two of the oldest sitting judges in the court's history and could possibly step down in the next four years. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. 
Georgia basketball head coach Tom Crean, all smiles last night. One of Crean's former players, Travis Denier, who he coached at Marquette, hit the game-winning shot to win the TBT tournament and secure a $1 million prize. Crean is getting ready to coach the dogs again, but last night it brought back some special memories for him. Travis Diener was one of the original guys to come with this and came with us in my second year there. And he just absolutely helped turn that program. It was just absolutely fitting. It was awesome to, to watch that game and to watch him make that last shot last night. Great shot. There's only three days left to vote for this year's Atlanta Sports Awards. Thousands have participated today. We're spotlighting the nominees for Outstanding Coach. Outstanding Coach, presented by The Home Depot. Frank DeBoer, Atlanta United. In his debut season as head coach, DeBoer led the five stripes to a double, the Campiones Cup and the U.S. Open Cup. Danny Hall, Georgia Tech Baseball. Hall led the Jackets to a 43-19 record, an ACC Coastal Division Championship, and was named ACC Coach of the Year. Brian Snitker, Atlanta Braves. The Braves won the NL East for the second straight year, tying the Yankees for most division titles in MLB history. Voting very tight for this one. You can go to 11alive.com slash sports awards now to vote for this and several other awards, including outstanding team, college sports athlete, and more you have until midnight on Friday. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Together we're reclaiming America's proud heritage as a nation of builders and a nation that can get things done. President Donald Trump in Atlanta for a major transportation announcement. Tonight on Primetime, we're breaking down his plan and what his visit could signal for the November election. Plus, Emory is going to need a whole lot of help to get its COVID-19 vaccine trial through the next phase. What you can do. But first tonight, we're kicking it off in the Weather Center. Meteorologist Samantha Moore is tracking some storms for us tonight, Sam. Oh, it has been a really rumbly out there, Aisha, tonight with a lot of lightning. It's just been inc an incredible light show out there. And you can see where it is really still coming down. And we're seeing a lot of electricity in the air over near Douglasville, stretching up towards Powder Springs. As I query this area, in the last 15 minutes, we have had 120 strikes. It's just one right after another I'm sure all of the cats and dogs are hiding right now from all of this action that is going on a lot of heavy rain associated with this some gusty winds and it's not moving it's just sitting here pounding them there so it is a rough night for the folks in the Douglasville area stretching up towards Powder Springs things are looking a little better inside the perimeter it was really loud about an hour ago but things are starting to lighten up here a bit we still have some pockets of heavy rain uh, near the Emory area and some light but nothing like has moved over Douglasville. We've had four strikes in the past 15 minutes. So um, those storms moved through, though. They are weakening a bit here over the Atlanta Midtown area, still flaring up here over Douglasville. We had some storms that were moving uh, northeast of Buchanan up towards Rock Mart. Those are weakening quite a bit as well. So that is good news for the folks in Yorkville. Uh, this band that stretches from Murrayville over towards Ball Ground. Yep, Ball Ground is getting it now with some of that heavier rain and some lightning. They already had in Cherokee County some very heavy rain earlier this afternoon. This is the next wave that's moving in from the southeast right now. It has cleared Lake Lanier, so things are looking better over the Lake Lanier area right now. And over towards Floyd County, we've had some storms moving from south to north as well. So it is an active night still. I think once we get beyond sunset, the sun just went down. So as we start to cool off, things will start to quiet down during the overnight hours. So I don't think this will be an all night long event. Things will be looking better. We still have that chance for general thunderstorms tonight as well as into tomorrow. The Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma, keeping us out of that organized area of severe weather. So what we're seeing are these isolated severe storms here tonight. And I think we're probably out of the woods. Now, as soon as I say that, that Douglasville storm may get warned on. So I probably shouldn't say that yet. But the trend is, as we head into the next few hours, a little quieter and coming up, we'll track that for you.
All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Let's get to our top story tonight, folks. A 19-year-old in jail tonight for the murder of 8-year-old Sequoia Turner, the little girl killed in a shooting on the 4th of July. Joe Hankey had the chance to talk to the suspect's attorney just before Julian Conley turned himself in at APD headquarters. That attorney says he's innocent. Well, that's right, Jeff. The 19-year-old who turned himself in at APD headquarters here behind me a few minutes before 5 p.m. with his attorney, Jackie Patterson, by his side. Jackie tells us Julian Connolly is innocent. He was there the night of the shooting, but he says someone else fired the gun that killed Sequoia Turner. Here is Julian Connolly, video of him walking into police headquarters. He's charged with felony murder for Sequoia's death. Also, two charges of aggravated assault as there were two adults, including the girl's mother, in the car that was shot. Patterson says his client is the man seen in some of the photos released by Atlanta police and was there when the girl was shot. They do not deny that. Atlanta police tell us the car the girl was in came up on a roadblock near the Wendy's Rayshard Brooks was shot and killed at by police in June. Police say the roadblock was put up by a group of armed men. When the car tried making a U-turn, at least one person shot at the car. Patterson says his client was only out protesting the death of Rayshard Brooks alongside other people and played no role in the shooting. She had a weapon that night. We don't dispute that, but it's not against the law to openly carry a weapon. And the government is going to have a difficult time trying to prove his guilt. My client is being arrested solely because he chose not to go to the police and make statements. This is a sham warrant and a sham arrest, but we're going to be fighting it vigorously. And while his attorney calls it a sham warrant and a sham arrest, he is in custody tonight. Connolly could make his first appearance as early as tomorrow morning. Tonight, he'll be booked into the Fulton County Jail. Meanwhile, Atlanta police say the investigation into Sequoia Turner's murder is still active and open. We'll send it back to you in studio. President Trump on his way back to D.C. tonight after visiting Atlanta to reveal a new policy that he says will cut red tape, impeding economic growth. 11 Alive's Hope Ford was outside the UPS hub in Hapeville, where he spoke today. Yeah, and the president said one of the first projects to benefit from his announcement will be Georgia's expansion of I-75. The expansion is meant to add 77 new lanes of commercial highway, mainly to the benefit of drivers that he met here today at the UPS airport hub. Now, president Trump says his administration will streamline federal permitting, allowing projects like highways to be approved or disapproved in two years or less. Trump spoke to a room filled mainly with Georgia politicians about I-75 and improving the port of Savannah. The president talked about his hopes of getting American infrastructure back to the past when roads and bridges were built on a faster timeline. And he was also joined by a small business owner who thanked him for the announcement. Well, Mr. President, you have shown what leadership can do when you reform the old way of doing things. Infrastructure reform and building new roads faster will not only help our company to achieve our project goals, but they will hurt the entire state, both economically and socially. We want the United States to compete and win in the 21st century, and that means we will not allow our nation to be hamstrung by wasteful Washington regulations. We're the nation that built the Golden Gate Bridge in four years, the Hoover Dam in five years, and a lot of people don't understand this, but it's so true. We built the Empire State Building in less than a year. Now, while everyone inside applauded his announcement today, a lot of people have been critical of him on social media. A lot of people calling his trip a waste and saying it's meaningless in the middle of a pandemic. Now, President Trump did make a similar infrastructure, uh, infrastructure announcement back in 2017 with a lot of the same talking points he had today. Back to you. In a poll released by NBC News and The Wall Street Journal, Joe Biden is being favored by voters over the president. NBC News reports the presumptive Democratic nominee holds a double digit lead nationally over President Donald Trump. Seven in 10 voters also disapproved of the president's handling of the coronavirus and race relations, saying that they think the country is on the wrong track. President Trump's visit highlights Georgia as a state both parties say could go either way in November. 11 Alive's Doug Richards takes a look at what issues may drive voters. Protests against police mistreatment have been making news for weeks and driving some of the discussion among voters eyeing President Trump's effort to win a second term. Like the president, Republicans think swing voters in Georgia's suburbs want to protect law enforcement. We need to have law and order restored on our streets. We need to not be talking about defunding the police, but working with police to make sure that 
the needs of minority communities are met. Cobb County Republican Jason Shepard says Trump deserves high marks for making the economy a priority during the COVID-19 pandemic. Democrats like Van Johnson, mayor of Savannah, see it differently. Our President Trump and Governor Kemp's reckless reopening plans are only making things worse in our community. Democrats think the pandemic and civil unrest will drive Georgia voters to oppose Trump in November. But Trump has history behind him. Since Georgia voters backed Democrat Jimmy Carter in 1980, they supported Republicans in eight of the nine presidential elections that followed. But Trump barely got 50 percent of the vote in Georgia in 2016. Leaders of both political parties say Georgia will be a toss up with less than four months to go before the votes are counted in November. Turning now to COVID-19, the state reported an additional 3,871 new coronavirus cases today, the second highest increase to date, bringing Georgia's total to 127,834 total cases since March. And younger people are now uh, taking the lead with the most confirmed cases. So earlier this week, 18 to 39 year olds made up 41% of the state's total cases. Infectious disease experts like Dr. Jay Varkey at Emory University are cautious about the potential impact to the state's public health system. And to that end, we hope that they will be less uh, uh, prone to being hospitalized, less prone to requiring intensive care, and hopefully uh, less likely to, to uh, develop complications, including death. The Georgia Department uh, of Public Health reported 417 new hospitalizations. That's twice as many as yesterday and the highest one day total since the state started reporting the information. And as of today, there are 2,700 and 86 people in the hospital sick with the virus. Well, today, the Georgia Department of Public Health reported an additional 37 deaths, bringing the state's total death total to 3,091 people. We're learning the governor has extended a COVID-19 executive order that was set to expire at 11.59 tonight. The measure will expire at 11.59 p.m. now on July 31st. The order only applies to those who are medically fragile or live in long term care facilities. The order also outlines mandatory criteria for businesses to operate right now and social distancing guidelines. Piedmont Atlanta Hospital opened their Marcus Tower 17 days early. The move is part of the hospital's pandemic response as they try to create additional capacity for patients today. Patients were moved into the tower. The hospital says the tower will also allow them to create additional capacity as needed as COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the state. A Fulton County High School student agrees with a mask debate, but the school district is only recommending them for students when they return to class next month. So tonight, she's taking her calls to the people on social media, trying to buy enough masks for all students in her district. She's talking with Chinu Her about her mission and what inspired her. Before she goes back to a classroom next month, Sydney Harrison hopes to give every student in the district a reusable mask like this. The first day of school for Fulton County is August 17th, and families have the option of continuing virtual learning or heading back to the classroom. Sydney Harrison, a soon to be senior at Chattahoochee High School, is going back. A lot of my friends and a lot of people at my school are concerned about going back. She's concerned too. After district officials announced at a meeting two weeks ago, a mandate for school staff to wear masks in the building, but only recommending it for students. I feel like it is a big risk to take by not having masks mandated because a lot of people don't have the option to do online school. I just wonder why make staff wear them and make people wear them on the bus, but don't mandate them in the building. So Sydney's taking action, creating a GoFundMe to buy reusable masks for every student in the district. Fulton County schools have about 94,000 students and is the fourth largest school system in Georgia. But Sydney's confident she can reach the $40,000 goal to get these masks. I feel like as a community, it's our job to kind of step up right now because we can't wait on um, officials or higher up because the virus won't wait. And she feels their job is to keep everyone safe. If we're going to go back to school, we might as well do it right. Sydney tells me she's already in touch with a supplier who has agreed to make all the reusable masks like this if she reaches her financial goal. And if you want to donate, we have a link to her GoFundMe page on this story on our website at 11alive.com.
Coming up next on Primetime, a five-year-old's rare illness has drastically cut down her life expectancy, but instead of giving in, her parents are going above and beyond to find a cure. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. You can subscribe there and even join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in primetime coming up after the break. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's. A local family is learning to cope with a, a devastating diagnosis while stuck in quarantine. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross reports after years of searching for answers, five-year-old Hayden's family is now trying to understand what they have found. She loves music. She sings even though she can't sing the words now. Hayden Fowler has always had a beautiful voice, whether she's singing or laughing. She has always been hilarious. She has the best like outbursts and comebacks. But over the past few years, those comebacks have slowed as Hayden is losing her ability to speak. She says mommy, she says baby. Her mom, Carrie, knew something was wrong by the time Hayden was one. But when she was evaluated by the state, they told her Hayden's delays weren't anything to worry about. Over the next few years, Carrie took Hayden to one doctor after the next. She was given a diagnosis of severe autism, but Carrie pushed for a consultation with a geneticist. At the appointment, the doctor commented on Hayden's thick eyebrows and hair, telling her mom she had coarse facial features. They ran blood work for family of rare disorders that Carrie looked up online. I'm a researcher and I don't like surprises, and I just knew she looked just like all the other kids with it. Hayden's facial features, her speech regression and sleeping problems all started to make sense but it was the worst sort of sense imaginable. The five-year-old was diagnosed with San Filippo syndrome, a rare, aggressive, and deadly genetic disorder. A form of dementia or Alzheimer's for children. She proceeds to tell us that there is no cure. Doctors say Hayden will keep regressing, losing her ability to talk, walk, and eat. A typical lifespan for children diagnosed with San Filippo is between 12 and 20 years old. Hayden's parents have started raising money for research to find a cure. Even though she's terrified of heights, Carrie and her husband are set to skydive to raise awareness about the disease. It seems so minuscule now compared to my child being diagnosed with a disease that has no cure. We just want Hayden to know how much she is loved. Carrie says the outpouring of love and support their family has received since the diagnosis has been incredible but they're still in quarantine because of COVID-19. So it's been really difficult to be alone. Let's turn now to the biggest stories happening outside Georgia. First, attorneys for George Floyd's family have filed a lawsuit against the city of Minneapolis and the four police officers charged 
in its murder. The lawsuit alleges the officers violated Floyd's rights when they restrained him. It accuses the city of Minneapolis of allowing a culture of excessive force and racism to flourish in its police force. Floyd died May 25th after former officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee against Floyd's neck for about eight minutes as Floyd said he couldn't breathe. Chauvin and three other officers were fired and now all face criminal charges. Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend has been denied bail and will remain behind bars on charges. She recruited girls for the financier to sexually abuse. British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell has pleaded not guilty after being held without bail since her July 2nd arrest. She was charged with recruitment at least three girls, one as young as 14, for Epstein to abuse between 1994 and 1997. Epstein killed himself in August 2019 while awaiting sex trafficking charges. A federal judge has reduced bail for Hollywood stars Lori Laughlin and her husband in the college admission scandal from $1 million now to $100,000. The Full House actress and her husband, fashion designer Mosimo Giannoli, told a judge that they will not flee ahead of their sentencing next month. Officials say Laughlin and Ginoli paid bribes totaling $500,000 to get their daughters into the University of Southern California as crew recruits. Laughlin and her husband face up to 20 years in prison, but under terms of a guilty plea deal, prosecutors are seeking a two-month sentence for Laughlin and a five-month prison term for her husband. For your 11 Alive storm trackers have been busy tonight tracking the storms moving across the Atlanta metro area and all across North Georgia. And right now, the heaviest storm still west of town here in the Douglasville area, stretching on up towards Powder Springs, where they're still seeing a lot of lightning, dozens and dozens of strikes here. Things have quieted down in the Atlanta area inside the perimeter. I should be specific, most of the showers now from uh, the split northward where we're still seeing some isolated downpours. These have really diminished that we're over towards Rock Mart and we're seeing this line stretch from ball ground into Dahlonega. It's continuing with some pretty good rainfall. Uh, not much lightning at this point, a little bit over there near ball ground and some east of Murrayville. But overall, the trend I think is going to be to overall weaken as we head towards midnight. You can see how much rain we've had, though pretty impressive amounts where you see the darker green colors here on the screen just north of Alpharetta about an inch north side of Atlanta near Sandy Springs about an inch and a third and amounts all over coming in at about an inch as these storms moved on through. So we're going to continue to watch these tonight as they move off to the northwest. We still have some up in far northwest Georgia, those that are moving north of Canton at this hour and we'll end up seeing these things start to quiet down as we head into the overnight hours. Still a chance for general thunderstorms and showers overnight and again tomorrow Storm Prediction Center still not putting us in any organized area for severe weather, but we'll watch that carefully as the day progresses. This is the time lapse from today as the rain just came down. Look at that, how it just uh, came in very, very quickly at 285 and 75. All that lightning as well was really something. Kimberly Morris in Canton, she, this is her rainfall gauge. She said she picked up two and a half inches in a very short period of time earlier uh, this evening. This was early evening as that first wave came through Cherokee County. So it has been a very busy day across the Atlanta metro area. Believe it or not, we only had one uh, hundredth of an inch there at uh, the airport, so not a whole lot of rain there, but we have had a lot of rain elsewhere. 91 are high, 77 are low, so that was a little bit above the average of 89 and 71. So right now, temperatures have cooled due to the rainfall. We're at 76 now in Atlanta, 74 in Carrollton, 75 in Thomaston, where we haven't had much rain. It's still pretty warm, 87 in Rome and in Athens right now. So the storms are going to taper off. We're going to see more on our Thursday afternoon and evening, and then that weekend storm threat continues during the afternoon and evening hours. So there are the current storms that we're watching on radar. Those are going to continue to move to the north and kind of weaken as they go now that we are losing that daytime heating component. As we head into tomorrow, we'll see some clouds to start and then after lunchtime, we'll start to watch the storms pop again and they'll continue throughout the evening hours. About a 30% chance of that on our Thursday afternoon and evening. So we'll be watching that happen as we head into uh, the late evening hours too and Friday starts out dry and then we'll see more in the way of showers forming again about a 30% chance on our Friday and then chances go up a little bit during the course of the weekend we will be at 30% chance Saturday 
but a 40% chance on our Sunday. And it looks like next week, those rain chances will continue to go up to around a 50% chance each and every day, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. A lot of moisture is in place. It is that time of year. It is sultry. You get this daytime heating. You get the storms to pop. We're talking mid-90s for the weekend, but it's going to feel more like 100 to 105. Answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough. Claims are spreading online linking seemingly overpriced items on a furniture website to human trafficking. But is there any evidence? Jason Puckett with our Verify team is looking at the facts. Up front, we're calling this a conspiracy theory. And as we break down these claims, I want you to notice how this whole theory depends on cherry picked information and how every time something is debunked or proven false, a new claim pops up. Let's start with the basics. This all went viral after a reddit.com post, quote, is it possible Wayfair is involved in human trafficking or are these just extremely overpriced cabinets? Now this post shows four cabinets on Wayfair.com ranging from 12 to $14,000 and it draws attention to their names. Well, within hours, these claims started popping up as well. Internet sleuths looked into the names of the cabinets and found that in each instance, there was a matching missing person case. This appears off-putting, but our research showed it's not as sinister as it seems. First, let's talk about these girls. This article claims Samaya Muman was reported missing last year, and there was a $13,000 cabinet named Samaya on Wayfair. But Samaya wasn't in the Ohio missing persons database. She actually made a video about all of this herself, where she explains she was never missing and that that article has been removed. How are you gonna post about me being missing? You don't even know me. So the claim linking Samaya to the storage cabinet is false. And it wasn't the only one. Mary Durrett was found safe in 2017, and Samara Duplessis was found safe in May. Our research actually showed that most of the links to missing persons are provably false. But what about the names, you may ask? The Duplessis pillow, for instance. That's not a typical product name, right? Well, it actually is typical on Wayfair. If you search Duplessis, you find rugs, tables, pillows, statues, lamps, and more, all with Duplessis in the name. 
And no, Wayfair didn't change these names after these claims came out. We checked archived pages and these products existed first. When we looked deeper into Wayfair's naming, we realized it's not hard to make a viral post like this. My last name, for instance, Puckett, isn't a common product name, but it is on Wayfair. I found tables, dressers, lamps, even beds with my last name. And if I do a Google search for Puckett Missing, I find three different missing persons with my same last name on the first page alone. Combine these results and boom, I have a Puckett Missing Persons case linked to a Wayfair Puckett product. It may seem weird to have personal names on Wayfair products, but the claim that it's linked to sex trafficking is false. Try this with your own name. There are more claims here and you can check out our breakdowns online. But while we can keep pointing out why this theory doesn't add up and is using false claims, we can't answer the big question. Why did these pillows and cabinets cost so much money on Wayfair? So far, the company has only said that they were incorrectly priced and has taken them down. But without a deeper explanation, more claims will likely pop up. Think twice though before you share those. So far, there's no evidence that strange pricing on a website is linked to sex trafficking and all the claims so far have turned out false. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Well, throughout the evening hours, we've had numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, but the overall look when you look at the radar is things not quite as active, even though it is still coming down here on the west side, stretching from Powder Springs on up into Cobb County here as we head into the next few hours. It'll continue to move in that direction. So we do have quite a bit of lightning associated with this particular thunderstorm. 17 strikes in the past 15 minutes, but about 
30 minutes ago, we were talking about over 100 strikes, so things have definitely improved there. The showers over Atlanta are diminishing. That is some good news. This band that moved across Lake Lanier is now kind of breaking up as it heads to the north and west. So some decent showers here north of Murrayville and lots of cleanup to do after today's storms. We had numerous wind damage reports and hail damage reports. This one here in Fayetteville in the Fayetteville area, a few trees down there and Allen Wind Road and uh, in northeast Fayetteville from thunderstorm wind gusts and also at McDonough Road and Zoe Court. We had power lines down there as well from the strong gusty winds and here in Troop County hail walnut to golf ball size hail did damage to a vehicle there and even cracked its windshield that was on route 403 in Hines Road. So there is a lot of cleanup after these storms today, but I do think things are going to be trending downward as we head into the next hour or so and after midnight it'll be much quieter and we'll see a little bit of fog forming from this leftover moisture and we are in the humid sector of all of this that's why it was so active today all that dry air we had the last couple of days it is retreating to the north unfortunately so coming up what pat what this means for our weather pattern the rest of the week and into the weekend all right, Sam, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. You know, there are important conversations happening about race, leading people to ask themselves, what is my role? And where do we go from here together after weeks of protests? And these conversations, as you know, are just a starting point for most of us. Our Atticus team set out to hear from people all across the country, and everyone's answers are so very different. I can't breathe! Black Lives Matter! Build this country basically for free. I stand the Black Lives Matter so much. You know, you guys are creating a hostile environment here. Washington, D.C., Bozeman, Montana, between Texas and uh, Georgia. I'm a student, I'm an archaeologist, I'm a herpetologist. My role in the movement is to define and define my voice. Is to educate. I create classes, programs, and learning opportunities to support people through their journey of anti-racism. I come from a place where I'm very privileged. I'm a white woman, I'm straight. I don't think there's much I, as an individual, need to do other than encourage conversation. I'm not racist, so, you know, what's the rule? I, I saw this stuff in history books. I never thought I would be, I would have to be on the front line. Please call the clouds. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. After what happened to Christian Cooper, we wanted to highlight Black birders. We went with calling it Black Birders Week. We wanted to see um, people who look like us enjoying the outdoors, and we wanted to show people like, hey, look, we occupy these spaces as well. I had also been arrested for allegedly spending a counterfeit $20 bill. My experience please very, very different than Mr. Floyd's. I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just write about my experience really briefly. It's had 2 million likes and uh, 600,000 retweets. Um, and as I understand it, that's a lot. 75 things that white people can do for uh, racial justice. It actually started out as a list for myself. Um, and then I said, well, if I have this list, I might as well share it. It takes so much black death and so much gruesome, horrendous dehumanization of black life for the white collective to notice what we've been saying all this time. To me, at least, race is simply just the color of someone's skin. Like, it has nothing to do with who they are as a person. Systemic racism. I don't think we have systemic racism. Yes, there are racist people out there, but 
we do not in this country have a systemic racism problem. And then there's this notion that there's this white privilege, but there really isn't. I'm not abusing black people. Why should I feel guilty about it? This moment, it's not happening because of celebrities. It's not. It's happening because of the millions of protesters around the world who have said, enough's enough. We really want people to, to know, to listen, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> We just want to feel safe when we go outside. We we don't want to feel like, um, you know, is this the last time I'm, I'm going to be leaving my house? In my lifetime, I've not seen a moment such as this. And I'm so terrified that not enough will change. To be a voice, not an echo, but a voice. That's my role in this movement. And yes, it is a movement. You know, we want to keep engaging in these conversations right now on the 11 Alive YouTube page. You can find a playlist with individual interviews answering the same question. That's youtube.com slash 11 Alive. Student athletes are back on campus at UGA. Next week, basketball players will be on the court getting instruction from coaches for the first time since March. The dogs missed a lot of important time together over the past couple of months. But as Alex Glaze shows us, they're excited to be back. In a normal world, we'd have had four and a half to five weeks of spring and, and we'd have had a full summer. This summer has been anything but normal. There's nothing normal, obviously, about this summer. It, there's nothing even remotely close to normal when it would come to how you would build your team. On July 20th, Georgia coaches will have the opportunity to work with their players on the court for the first time since the SEC tournament was canceled on March 12th. We're just trying to make it as, as, uh, as positive and as uh, encouraging, but most importantly, as thorough as it can be in helping them develop into the An entire spring and over a month of summer work has been missed, time that has proven to be huge in player development in the past. Nick Claxton got so much better last spring inside of those four and a half weeks of work with, with what he did in the weight room, what he did outside, what he did uh, with us on the court, and what he did extra that when he left here to start working out for the pro teams, I mean, like, it was it, it was not shocking whatsoever that, that the NBA was that much more excited about him based on where he was at. He just attacked the spring. As for what to expect in the 2020 season, Crean is in no rush to make any guesses. Don't be in a rush. Listen to the right people, all right? The information is changing rapidly, and uh, let's go with that. And, and to me, that that's how I've tried to look at it. None of us know what's going to happen. I mean, I mean, I could call five different coaches right now and get at least, at least three, potentially five, but at least three different ideas on when we're going to start the season. School administrators are now making decisions about masks, but there are some students with some strong feelings about that subject. A teenager in Forsyth County is uh, going head to head with the school superintendent demanding masks be required and not just a suggestion. Katie Gates, a rising senior at South Forsyth High School, sent a long email to the superintendent. She explained why she feels strongly that he should make masks mandatory like neighboring districts in Cobb and Gwinnett counties. She wrote in this letter, as a leader, it is your job to heed the advice of scientists and medical professionals and make the best decision for your students. They're not invasive. They're only a minor inconvenience. And I think that, you know, in instances like this, when we're in a crisis, people should be willing to risk a minor inconvenience to mitigate community spread and mitigate the risk of other people. You know, 11 Alive spoke with Superintendent Jeff Bearden, who said that he is sticking with his decision. He says some people have medical conditions like asthma, which prevent them from wearing a mask. And you can see more, including Katie's full letter on 11alive.com. 
Life went from the spotlight on stage and the red carpet to isolation and fighting for her life. But Atlanta actress Makari Tarpley never stopped smiling or thinking about others, even on her 16th birthday. Makari is Brave Conquer's fear. Her life, it draws people. Vibrant, beautiful, successful. Makari Tarpley could have never imagined all that her 16th birthday would bring. Is this actually happening? Like, there's no way that I'm dreaming, obviously. Four months before her birthday, Makari was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was scary. Her first thought was, am I going to die? She's fought along the way. She's always smiling. I had to just look at it in a different way. I mean, it's going to be a journey, but it'll be something I can tell my kids one day. Makari focused on her future and her sweet 16. We were planning this party, and of course, all of that stopped when um, the world changed. Life was suddenly rounds of chemo and COVID-19 quarantine. Locked in. <laughs> Locked in, so. Mm -hmm. Locked in and doing a lot of good. And since there wasn't really much to do for my 16th, you know, because of Corona, I was like, well, let's do something else. So we thought, how about we do a fundraiser and aim for $16,000. It's not a fun place to be all the time. Makari and her mom, Tamari, chose to help children with sickle cell through the Aflac Cancer and Blood Disorder Center of Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. The community there, they're so sweet and loving. One in 365 African-American children have sickle cell. The Tarpleys say the fundraiser is a way to support the kids and Black Lives Matter. You make an impact. How are you feeling? I had my last chemotherapy treatment. Oh, that's awesome. I'm doing amazing. Makari could have never imagined what her 16th birthday would bring, and she is thankful. There's so many other things to be happy for, grateful for. Makari is more than halfway to her goal for her birthday, and you can find the link to help her get all the way there on 11alive.com. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. 
Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home. Today is the tax deadline. You got that extension. We hope you haven't forgotten about it, but if you did, here's your reminder. Some people still have questions about filing their taxes this year, so to answer them, we brought in our financial analyst, Andrew Poulos. Andrew, you have had a very busy day. You joined us for the morning and afternoon shows, and now you're back. We're so grateful for that. But still, the questions keep on coming, so let's get right to it. We're going to jump into the first one. This person asks uh, what they should do if they need to file for an extension. Uh, if you need to file for an extension, you can go online, uh, either use a software or go directly to the IRS website and file it electronically so you can get filing confirmation. If you have to file it by mail, you're going to fill out Form 4868 and send it uh, to the IRS. You can download that form as well. Uh, from the IRS website, but generally if you file it electronically, that's going to be your easiest way to get it done for today. All right, so another person wants to know if they do file for an extension, when will they actually uh, be able to have those taxes to be due? If you file for an extension, this, the extended deadline is still October 15th, which is the traditional extension deadline uh, when we are in a calendar of April 15th as a filing date. So nothing's changed. Uh, at this point for October 15th. You, you just have a few less uh, months now since it's been pushed from April to July. Uh, but if you file today, just be aware that you have literally, what, about 10, 12 weeks to file your return uh, timely. All right, so this person wants to know, where's the money? They said they filed electronically in April, but they haven't received their refund yet. What's going on there? Yep, I've heard a few of these situations, Aisha. Um, probably just some backlog. Obviously, the, uh, the IRS was shut down as uh, many businesses were and other agencies uh, due to COVID. Uh, so, however, they've opened up. Their phone lines are open. They might be slow and it might be difficult to get through, uh, but I would encourage that person to call in and inquire and get a status update. Uh, if they file back in March or April and they haven't received their refund, they definitely need to check on it, but it's just probably backlog right now. All right, because e-file usually takes about two weeks, so it's been quite the delay. All right. It, it is, but we've had uh, returns we've e-filed, one specifically that our client still hasn't gotten the money, and it was e-filed back in March. Okay, well, there you go. You have all the answers you need tonight, but if you need more resources for completing your taxes, we have them for you in our story on 11alive.com or on our app. Just look for this headline. Whew, what a night it has been with a lot of thunderstorm activity and a lot of reports from storm trackers and friends on Facebook just saying the kids were excited by the storms, the dogs, the cats were hiding from the storms and things are quieting down right now. Thank goodness. Boy, we had hundreds of lightning strikes over the Douglasville Powder Springs area. Those storms are really falling apart right now. So you can breathe a sigh of relief there and the dog can come out from under the couch. Uh, and Lafayette, we have some thunderstorms right now stretching down towards Somerville. They moved just west of Rome earlier and now are getting ready to cross over the state line into Tennessee. We also have these cells that are continuing to move to the north near Mossy Creek. They're weakening as they go to the north as well, but still some decent downpours there in the Mossy Creek area. And overall, it looks like things will be quieting down now that we have lost the heat of the day. But the rainfall amounts pretty impressive. Over an inch in some spots as these storms came rolling through. Uh, we had an inch and a third here in the uh, Sandy Springs area as well as down in uh, Fayette County. And here in the center of town, really picking up around an inch and a half as those storms, those thunderstorms rumbled through Midtown a little bit earlier this evening. So we still have a chance for general showers, isolated thunderstorms tonight, and uh, a chance for that again tomorrow. We'll watch this marginal risk. That would be isolated severe risk. We'll watch if they adjust that closer to us once we get into our Thursday. Uh, looking out over Rome right now, a little breezy. What a nice night it is. Things have uh, cooled off now that the rain has moved through in most locations. And it is going to be heating up again as we head towards the weekend. In fact, those heat indices, as feels like temperatures this weekend, will likely be around 100 to 105 degrees. So temperatures temperatures today and this is how we shaped up this afternoon. We ended up seeing those temps right around 91 degrees in uh, Carrollton. We also had 91 in Covington and in Atlanta. And we ended up seeing 97 in Eatonton, 98 in Athens. The heat was definitely on in the eastern side of the state. So we're looking at 
That 24 hour temperature change, we have cooled down where the storms rumbled through. Atlanta's 10 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. Marietta's 11 degrees cooler. So it is really nice to get that cooling effect from the rain after this, the, uh, the storms move out. So right now we're at 76 in Atlanta, 81 in Gainesville, 79 in Canton, 74 in Carrollton. So storms are tapering off. We'll have more tomorrow afternoon and evening. And then that weekend storm threat will be back. In fact, we're going to see it as well Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into the beginning of next week. So the next 12 hours, we'll see those temperatures getting down into the low 70s overnight. So 73 should be our low 92 should be our high with that chance for storms during the afternoon and evening right around a 30% chance for that. Uh, so we'll be dry tomorrow to start and then after lunchtime you can expect to see those showers and storms starting to pop up during the afternoon and evening hours a dry start to Friday and then we'll have about a 30% chance of showers and storms on our Friday afternoon and evening. So there you go 40% chance tomorrow 30% chance Friday and into Saturday 40% chance Sunday and then a 50% chance at the beginning into the middle of next week. Mid 90s this weekend, but it is going to feel a whole lot hotter with that heat and humidity. For you, get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough. Most of the focus of the November election will be on the showdown between President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. No matter which way that goes, the battle for control of Congress will be important too with the coronavirus pandemic and high unemployment likely to still be issues into the new year. Also at stake within the next four years is the possible future of the U.S. Supreme Court. Democrats control the House with 233 seats to the Republicans' 197. One seat is held by former Republican Justin Amash, who is now a libertarian. Four seats, formerly held by the GOP, are vacant. 
To ensure they keep control, Democrats must have a net loss of no more than 15 seats. For Republicans to win control, they would need a net gain of 16, plus win back those five other non-Democratic seats. In the Senate, Republicans have a 53 to 45 advantage, but there are two independents, Bernie Sanders and Angus King, who caucus with the Democrats. To ensure control of the Senate, the GOP must have a net loss of no more than two seats. Democrats would need a net gain of four seats to gain control if you include Sanders and King. But remember, the vice president acts as the tie-breaking vote on bills in the Senate, so a 50-50 split means the advantage goes to the president's party. This is potentially key for the makeup of the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Stephen Breyer are two of the oldest sitting judges in the court's history and could possibly step down in the next four years. Well, things are going to be improving overnight, but the rain will be back tomorrow during the afternoon and evening. 40% chance of that, 30% chance Friday and Saturday. Notice those temps, mid-90s. Woo, it's going to be a hot weekend. All right, stick around. Prime time rolls on at 10. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. First tonight, Governor Brian Kemp has extended the COVID-19 executive order that was set to expire in just two hours. This time, the extended order applies to more than the medically fragile. It outlines new rules for students, teachers, and staff going back to school. Our Natisha Lance is live at the state capitol to break down the very latest guidelines. Natisha, all yours. 
Well, Jeff, uh, Governor Kemp has said that he is concerned about that rising number of new COVID cases. Just this last week, if you recall, we hit a one day record high of 4,500 cases. So this extension backs up that concern that he has mentioned before. This order was set to expire at midnight tonight, but around 7 o'clock, Governor Kemp posted on his Facebook page that he would be extending his previous order. Uh, and here's what we do know about that order. So. In the previous order, social distance requirements will still be in place. In addition to that, um, it, it bans gatherings of more than 50 people if they can maintain a social distance of six feet. It also expands the shelter in place orders for people in nursing homes and the medically fragile. Now here's what is new about the order and this is particularly important as districts prepare to go back to school. The school board can require face masks. School districts may also reduce classes or move students into a more open place to help with social distancing and districts should also ensure ventilation systems are working properly. Now lastly, you might recall over the last week, there's been a stiff debate between Governor Kemp and Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lambs Bottoms over masks. Well, Governor Kemp encouraged wearing masks, but would not go as far as man making it a mandate. Meanwhile, Mayor Bottoms and other city leaders made it a mandate. And now Governor Kemp's executive order suspends all mask mandates because they are more restrictive than his order, therefore making them legally unenforceable. So that is what we have from this new order as of now. It will expire on July 30th unless Governor Kemp decides to extend it once again. And for more details on everything that's in that order, you can go to 11alive.com. All right, thank you, Natisha. Georgia reported an additional 3,871 new coronavirus cases today, the second highest increase to date, bringing Georgia's total now to 127,834 total cases since March. Younger people are taking the lead with the most confirmed cases. Earlier this week, 18 to 39 year olds made up 41% of the state's total cases. Infectious disease experts like Dr. Jay Varkey at Emory University are cautious about the potential impact to the state's public health system. And to that end, we hope that they will be less uh, uh, prone to being hospitalized, less prone to requiring intensive care and hopefully uh, less likely to, to uh, develop complications, including death. The Georgia Department of Public Health reported 417 new hospitalizations. That's twice as many as yesterday in the highest one day total since the state started reporting the information. As of today, there are 2,786 people in the hospital sick with the virus. Today, the Georgia Department of Public Health reported an additional 37 deaths, bringing the state's death toll now to 3,091. And with those numbers continuing to rise, New York State is sending in help. Today, Governor Andrew Cuomo gave a better idea of what supplies the state is sending to Atlanta. The state of New York is sending 7,500 of each of the following test kits, gloves, gowns, masks, and face shields, plus styrofoam coolers and more than 1,200 gallons of hand sanitizer. The state also plans to help Atlanta with contact tracing efforts. Governor Cuomo says he is grateful to Atlanta for sending volunteers and donations when New York was in the peak of its outbreak. Our numbers team crunches these totals every day so that you know how the virus is spreading in your area. You can search for this story in the 11 Alive app seen on TV section for a breakdown of cases in your county. Thunderstorms throughout the metro this evening. Meteorologist Samantha Moore joining us now with what it could look like overnight, Sam. Well, things should be quieting down, Aisha. Thank goodness, because it was just so loud with all of that thunder from the lightning caused by these thunderstorms. We had numerous severe warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings throughout the day. But you can see where we had um, literally hundreds of lightning strikes earlier from Douglasville towards Powder Springs. It's much quieter now, just a few showers. Also moving across the Georgia line very shortly, these uh, showers in Lafayette. Uh, they're weakening as well as this line that's in North Georgia is moving north of Mossy Creek. So things are quieting down. The showers and storms are going to taper off. Heat of the day storms will return, though, on our Thursday. And in fact, it's going to stay active through the end of the week, into the weekend, and into next week. We'll have details on that timing coming up. A 19-year-old facing charges in the murder of 8-year-old Sicoria Turner. The little girl was killed in a shooting on the 4th of July. Ron Jones has more on why the suspect's attorney says police, they are the wrong man. 
She had a weapon that night. We don't dispute that, but it's not against the law to openly carry a weapon. And the government is going to have a difficult time trying to prove his guilt. Attorney Jackie Patterson not holding back, defending his client, 19-year-old Julian Connolly outside Fulton County Jail when the teen surrendered Wednesday afternoon. Atlanta police say Connolly is connected to the deadly 4th of July shooting of 8-year-old Sequoia Turner in southeast Atlanta. Patterson says there was a group of people targeting the car Sequoia was riding in with her mom, and Connolly was not the trigger man. It was chaos, and everybody was shooting at one time. An investigator says Socoria was shot just yards away from where Atlanta police shot and killed Rayshard Brooks last month outside Wendy's. Now the fast food spot is nothing but a pile of rubble. Crews demolished it yesterday. Police want to find another person of interest in Socoria's case. They released this surveillance video last week of a man holding an AR-15. Conley is facing murder and aggravated assault charges, but his attorney says police got the wrong guy. My client is being arrested solely because he chose not to go to the police and make statements. This is a sham warrant and a sham arrest, but we're going to be fighting it vigorously. Conley's first court appearance is expected tomorrow at noon. They say there's a reason. They say that time will heal. But neither time nor reason will change the way I feel. That was Sequoia Turner's mother, Charmaine, today. She was joined by friends and family to say goodbye to her daughter. Private funeral service was held this morning at New Calvary Missionary Baptist Church here in Atlanta. Most of those in attendance were dressed in white. You can hear more remarks and watch the entire service on 11 Alive's YouTube page. You do. President Donald Trump is easing back on environmental rules to speed up infrastructure projects in Georgia. The president visited the UPS aircraft hub at Hartsville Jackson to make that announcement. Hope for joining us live there to break it all down for us, Hope. That's right. In 2017, the president made an infrastructure reform announcement similar to the one he made today with a lot of the same talking points. Both times, he said that projects like bridges and roads would be approved or disapproved in two years or less. But today he got specific, saying that Georgia's expansion of I-75 would be one of the first to benefit from the reform. This expansion will add 77 new lane miles of commercial vehicles like those driven by UPS saving drivers countless hundreds of hours a year. Speaking to a room filled with Georgia politicians like Governor Brian Kemp and Senator Kelly Loeffler, Trump unveiled his plan to streamline the federal permit approval process. He pointed to these charts, one what he called the mountain of red tape projects must go through to be approved. This one, he says, will be an example of the new process. Now you go through this very simple but very comprehensive solution. It's a beautiful thing. UPS employees by like Julian Park applauded the president's plan. Because the investment in our roads and bridges helped reduce congestion and open up the bottlenecks, which makes it easier to get the packages where they need to go. More importantly, safe for drivers like myself, because we all know the most important stop of the day is when I get back home to her and my two beautiful kids. The president also used the spotlight to take a jab at Democratic rival Joe Biden. Our past vice president opposes all of our permitting reforms. Biden is happy to tie up projects in red tape, and we want to get things built. But they want to increase the length, so they want to increase it from that to much longer. And Biden released his own infrastructure plan on Tuesday, which aims to cre uh, create carbon free power generation by 2035 and also create union jobs to overhaul roads, bridges and the auto industry. I already hope so. Earlier today, we actually heard from the Democratic Party of Georgia. They slammed Trump for coming to Georgia during a pandemic. Yeah, that's right. The head of the Democratic Party uh, told reporters earlier today uh, that she was calling out uh, President Trump for visiting the state to make a campaign promise instead of visiting any of the, quote, sick and vulnerable in the state. New tonight at 10, we are hearing from a young mother who says a Coweta County Sheriff's deputy is nothing less than her family's angel. Casey Voiles and her infant son, Asher, were driving home from church when he started choking last Sunday. She pulled over, then Asher stopped breathing. Deputy Stephen Mills happened to pass by on his way to another call, and he stopped. He knew just what to do to clear Asher's throat and to get him breathing again. He's just godsend. 
that he is my family's angel that was sent and I can't thank him enough that first inhale like just clear inhale and scream that was the sweetest cry that I had ever heard I had never been more thankful to hear my baby cry in my life Miss Voyles wants everybody to know that she and her family will be grateful to Deputy Mills forever we are hoping to reach Deputy Mills to talk with him about that life-saving moment what a beautiful baby Glad that little one is okay tonight. Coming up, promising results from COVID-19 vaccine trials at Emory University. What experts say their next steps are. And in the next 30 minutes, a five-year-old's rare illness has cut down her life expectancy, but instead of giving in, her parents are going up and they're going beyond to find a cure. Soon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and we're learning more about the promising results from a vaccine trial at Emory and the next steps to get the vaccine approved for the general public. Tracy A. McPeer has the latest. We were pleasantly surprised that the vaccine was well tolerated. I think we were also pleasantly surprised that it did induce the immunity. Dr. Nadine Rufael is part of the team at Emory involved in the Moderna NIAID COVID-19 vaccine trial. Early results are in for phase one, and Rufael says the results are promising. In phase one, there were 45 subjects, all between the ages of 18 and 55 years old. They were given the first dose in mid-March and the second dose four weeks later. Side effects have been reported. We've seen uh, the subject uh, mentioning uh, pain at the injection site, but also mentioning some systemic symptoms such as uh, feeling uh, fatigue, having some chills, uh, having some headaches. And while the side effects may sound like a COVID infection, Rufael says the vaccine does not make them contagious. But the vaccine itself does not contain a live virus. It just uh, contains uh, the genetic material that will produce the spike protein. Next is phase three, and they are still looking for volunteers. And particularly communities that have been um, hit the hardest with COVID, uh, that's the African-American community and the Latinx community. While Rufael calls their timeline extremely speedy, she says their goal is for a vaccine that is safe and effective, so they'd rather be best than first. So we cannot say much about uh, uh, the safety of the vaccine at six or 12 months, uh, just uh, time will tell. Phase two of the vaccine at trial is already underway. Next up is phase three at the end of this month with 30,000 participants. They are still looking for volunteers to participate here in Atlanta and beyond. Well, we had uh, numerous severe thunderstorm mornings today.
Well, we had numerous severe thunderstorm warnings today as we saw those storms move on through. There you go. Uh, you can see that they were moving from the southeast to the northwest, and we ended up seeing them drop a lot of rain, bring in incredible amounts of lightning. But look how they're diminishing now. Things are really quieting down. There's a, is a cell moving towards Helen, but no lightning associated with that. So uh, things are cooling off, and that means things are quieting down here. But we did have numerous storm reports uh, throughout the Atlanta area. Here in uh, Fayetteville, we ended up seeing some trees down from those strong, gusty winds. Two reports of that. And we also had some large hail here in Troop County that dented a car as well as bashed in their windshield. So a really nasty night for many folks as these storms came uh, blowing on through. And we're in that warm sector right now as that humid air is moved in off the Gulf of Mexico and our drier air that we enjoyed the last couple of days. Despite the heat, it was drier and now it's retreating back to the north. So we are stuck in the soup as we head towards the end of the week and the weekend. So looking out towards Noonan, things have quieted there. The streets are still wet, but it's no longer raining there. And in Aragon, Gary Baldwin posted this picture earlier of the storms that moved on through and caused a lot of uh, interesting clouds formations out there as the storms billowed in across uh, West Georgia. So we're looking at temperatures that are definitely cooling off now that the rain has brought in some of that cooler air around here. So improving conditions as we head into the overnight hours. But 91 was our high, 77 our low. We should be around 89 and 71. And despite as the rain that we had, which was around an inch and a half in some spots, we only picked up one one hundredth of an inch at the airport. So right now 77 in Canton, 76 in Marietta, 73 in Carrollton, still 85 in Athens though. They haven't cooled off much because they didn't get really anything in the way of rain, but we're seven degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday in Atlanta and Marietta. So the next 12 hours we'll end up seeing those skies start to clear out a bit, although I think we'll be partly cloudy overnight. Slight rain chances for the morning. I don't think it'll amount to too much, but we had some showers this morning that kind of woke many of us up. So a six on our wasometer for our Thursday on that scale of one to an 11, with 11 being a perfect day, starting out in the low 70s, getting into the low 90s, and a 30% chance, a 40% chance of thunderstorms on Thursday. Excuse me. Yeah, we'll start out dry. We'll have some clouds around in the morning. We'll end up seeing some of those showers and storms pop up mainly after lunch and in through the evening, 40% chance on Thursday. And then Friday is the day we have a 30% chance. The chances go down just a little bit, a little less moisture available. We could still have some heavy downpours, but uh, it looks like we'll keep that 30% chance Friday and Saturday up to a 40% chance Sunday. And then a 50% chance on our Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, we are going to be stuck in that summertime heat of the day thunderstorm pattern. Uh, the next several days. Well, here is a look at your weather wow moment, and this is a big wow. Mike Sussman in Gainesville over Lake Lanier. He did it. He got that comet, and what a great shot he got, too. Uh, this is the comet Neowise as it soared across the sky yesterday over Lake Lanier last night, I should say, and just a beautiful shot. Mike, thank you so much. And if you'd like to be one of our 11 Alive Storm Trackers like Mike, you can go to our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook page and uh, apply for the group and hopefully you'll get approved and hopefully your work will show up right here on the WATL and 11 Alive. All right, so you might have come across some posts online recently linking a popular furniture site to human trafficking. Our Verify team is fact-checking the conspiracy theory. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association spreading online linking seemingly overpriced items on a furniture website to human trafficking. But is there any evidence? Jason Puckett with our Verify team looks at the facts. Up front, we're calling this a conspiracy theory. And as we break down these claims, I want you to notice how this whole theory depends on cherry picked information and how every time something is debunked or proven false, a new claim pops up. Let's start with the basics. This all went viral after a reddit.com post, quote, is it possible Wayfair is involved in human trafficking or are these just extremely overpriced cabinets? Now this post shows four cabinets on wayfair.com ranging from 12 to $14,000 and it draws attention to their names. Well, within hours, these claims started popping up as well. Internet sleuths looked into the names of the cabinets and found that in each instance, there was a matching missing person case. This appears off-putting, but our research showed it's not as sinister as it seems. First, let's talk about these girls. This article claims Samaya Muman was reported missing last year, and there was a $13,000 cabinet named Samaya on Wayfair. But Samaya wasn't in the Ohio missing persons database. She actually made a video about all of this herself, where she explains she was never missing and that that article has been removed. How are you gonna post about me being missing? You don't even know me. So the claim linking Samaya to the storage cabinet is false. And it wasn't the only one. Mary Durrett was found safe in 2017 and Samara Duplessis was found safe in May. Our research actually showed that most of the links to missing persons are provably false. But what about the names you may ask? The Duplessis pillow, for instance. That's not a typical product name, right? Well, it actually is typical on Wayfair. If you search Duplessis, you find rugs, tables, pillows, statues, lamps, and more, all with Duplessis in the name. And no, Wayfair didn't change these names after these claims came out. We checked archived pages and these products existed first. When we looked deeper into Wayfair's naming, we realized it's not hard to make a viral post like this. My last name, for instance, Puckett, isn't a common product name, but it is on Wayfair. I found tables, dressers, lamps, even beds with my last name. And if I do a Google search for Puckett Missing, I find three different missing persons with my same last name on the first page alone. Combine these results and boom, I have a Puckett Missing Persons case linked to a Wayfair Puckett product. It may seem weird to have personal names on Wayfair products, but the claim that it's linked to sex trafficking is false. Try this with your own name. There are more claims here and you can check out our breakdowns online. But while we can keep pointing out why this theory doesn't add up and is using false claims, we can't answer the big question. Why did these pillows and cabinets cost so much money on Wayfair? So far, the company has only said that they were incorrectly priced and has taken them down. But without a deeper explanation, more claims will likely pop up. Think twice though before you share those. So far, there's no evidence that strange pricing on a website is linked to sex trafficking and all the claims so far have turned out false. If you see a claim out there, you have questions, email it to us. You can also reach us on Facebook or Twitter. Time for me to head out to get ready for up late coming up in about 35 minutes over on 11 Alive. So if you're up late, we'll see you there. Thank you, Aisha. See you soon. Here's what's coming up on the Big 36. These conversations about race and injustice continue. We're asking people all over America, what is your role to make things better? Here are their answers coming up next. Trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20. There are important conversations occurring all over about race, leading people to ask themselves, what is my role and where do we go from here together after weeks of protest this summer? Our Atticus team set out to hear from people about their part and their answers were very different. I can't breathe! Black Lives Matter! We built this country basically for free. I stand with Black Lives Matter so much. You know, you guys are creating a hot environment here. Washington, D.C. Bozeman, Montana. Between Texas and uh, Georgia. I'm a student. I'm an archaeologist. I'm a herpetologist. My role in the movement is to define and define my voice. Is to educate. I create classes programs and learning opportunities to support people through their journey of anti-racism. I come from a place where I'm very privileged. I'm a white woman, I'm straight. I don't think there's much I, as an individual, need to do other than encourage conversation. I'm not racist, so, you know, what's the rule? I, I saw this stuff in history books. I never thought I would be, I would have to be on the front line. Please call the cops. 
I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. After what happened to Christian Cooper, we wanted to highlight Black Birders. We went with calling it Black Birders Week. We wanted to see um, people who look like us enjoying the outdoors, and we wanted to show people like, hey, look, we occupy these spaces as well. I had also been arrested for allegedly spending a counterfeit $20 bill. My experience with the police was very, very different than Mr. Floyd's. I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll just write about my experience really briefly. It's had 2 million likes and uh, 600,000 retweets. Um, and as I understand it, that's a lot. 75 things that white people can do for uh, racial justice. It actually started out as a list for myself. Um, and then I said, well, if I have this list, I might as well share it. It takes so much black death and so much gruesome, horrendous dehumanization of black life for the white collective to notice what we've been saying all this time. To me, at least, race is simply just the color of someone's skin. Like, it has nothing to do with who they are as a person. Systemic racism. I don't think we have systemic racism. Yes, there are racist people out there, but we do not in this country have a systemic racism problem. And then there's this notion that there's this white privilege, but there really isn't. I'm not abusing black people. Why should I feel guilty about it? This moment, it's not happening because of celebrities. It's not. It's happening because of the millions of protesters around the world who have said, enough's enough. We really want people to, to know, to listen, and um, I'm sorry. <laughs> We just want to feel safe when we go outside. We we don't want to feel like, um, you know, is this the last time I'm, I'm going to be leaving my house? In my lifetime, I've not seen a moment such as this. And I'm so terrified that not enough will change. To be a voice, not an echo, but a voice. That's my role in this movement. And yes, it is a movement. And we want to keep engaging in these conversations. Right now on the 11 Alive YouTube page, you can find a playlist with individual interviews answering the same question. That's youtube.com slash 11 Alive. A local family is learning to cope with a devastating diagnosis while stuck in quarantine. And Caitlin Ross reports after years of searching for answers, they're trying to understand what is going on. She loves music. She sings even though she can't sing the words now. Hayden Fowler has always had a beautiful voice, whether she's singing or laughing. She has always been hilarious. She has the best like outbursts and comebacks. But over the past few years, those comebacks have slowed as Hayden is losing her ability to speak. She says mommy, she says baby. Her mom, Carrie, knew something was wrong by the time Hayden was one. But when she was evaluated by the state, they told her Hayden's delays weren't anything to worry about. Over the next few years, Carrie took Hayden to one doctor after the next. She was given a diagnosis of severe autism, but Carrie pushed for a consultation with a geneticist. At the appointment, the doctor commented on Hayden's thick eyebrows and hair, telling her mom she had coarse facial features. They ran blood work for family of rare disorders that Carrie looked up online. I'm a researcher and I don't like surprises, and I just knew she looks just like all the other kids with it. Hayden's facial features, her speech regression and sleeping problems all started to make sense but it was the worst sort of sense imaginable. 
the five-year-old was diagnosed with San Filippo syndrome, a rare, aggressive, and deadly genetic disorder. A form of dementia or Alzheimer's for children. She proceeds to tell us that there is no cure. Doctors say Hayden will keep regressing, losing her ability to talk, walk, and eat. A typical lifespan for children diagnosed with San Filippo is between 12 and 20 years old. Hayden's parents have started raising money for research to find a cure. Even though she's terrified of heights, Carrie and her husband are set to skydive to raise awareness about the disease. It seems so minuscule now compared to my child being diagnosed with a disease that has no cure. We just want Hayden to know how much she's loved. Carrie says the outpouring of love and support their family has received since the diagnosis has been incredible, but they're still in quarantine because of COVID-19, so it's been really difficult to be alone. One of the biggest chains is making its customers wear masks beginning on July 20th. Masks will be required in Walmart and Sam's Club stores. The company says it is doing this to help curb the spread of COVID-19. Those masks will be handed out to customers who don't have them or they can buy one. Stores like Costco, Starbucks and Best Buy will all have uh, masks uh, mandated as well. Yesterday, CDC Director Robert Redfield said the United States could get this pandemic under control in four to eight weeks if everybody wears a mask. He also said he is glad to see the president finally wearing one because it sets an example for the rest of the country. Information on COVID-19 cases in hospitals will no longer go directly to the CDC. The hospitalization numbers will instead go to a central database in Washington, D.C., the Department of of Health and Human Services claims the CDC's, quote, old data gathering operation is an inadequate system, end quote. Officials say the new system faster and complete. The New York Times reports the new database is not open to the public, but the government says the information will still be made public through the CDC. Nick Cannon's in trouble. He has been dropped by Viacom, CBS, after making comments that uh, the media giant's calling a hateful speech. The actor and TV host was joined by controversial hip-hop figure Professor Griff on a recent episode of Cannon's Class podcast. Their conversation turned to discussing racial issues, referring to black people as, quote, the true Hebrews, and then uh, with conspiracy theories involving Jewish people, Cannon hosts Wild and Out, a comedy improv series, for VH1, the Viacom CBS owned cable channel. In an online post before Viacom CBS's decision, Cannon said he does not condone hate speech. The former U.S. Attorney General has lost an Alabama state primary to Tommy Tuberville, the former Auburn head football coach. Mr. Tuberville defeated Jeff Sessions to win the Republican Senate primary. Tuberville, who was endorsed by the president, will now face Democratic Senator Doug Jones. Jeff Sessions had held the Senate seat for 20 years until he resigned to serve as President Trump's attorney general. The president began criticizing Sessions when he recused I himself in the investigation into Russian election yesterday. interference. I'm so glad it finally ended. While we saw the severe storms move through earlier, it made for a spectacular sunset from the drone's perspective, as Blake Robson has drawn up over uh, Carroll County this evening. And then Renee Wallace and Noonan posting a beautiful rainbow picture she captured after the storm started to thin out a bit. So coming up, what you can expect for the rest of the week and the all-important weekend. Chase Elliott with a big night, stunning victory for the Georgia native in Kings Ridge in Atlanta Metro, and he is the victor in the All-Star Race. Highlights are coming up. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. 
on 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous. The popular app TikTok is under fire amid concerns about privacy. There are a few social media sites that could play a major role in this year's elections. Here's our why guy to explain. You go there for a laugh, but your search for an amusing video brings you to this. Here's my prediction for the 2020 presidential election. Even on the social media site TikTok, created for fun, there's plenty of political talk. While Facebook plans to let users opt out of political ads, you might run across a candidate streaming live video. It helps us explain why social media is having a major influence on this year's elections. These are unusual times, and the COVID-19 pandemic is a big part of that. People are spending more time on their phones. Politicians are not going out in person so much. So these platforms uh, enable campaigns to reach uh, voters where they're spending time. Michael Bassetta studies social media's influence on politics. All of these platforms allow politicians to connect directly to voters. They don't have to go through the media like they used to. Potential voters use social media for political conversation. Bosetta calls it non-electoral participation. They don't directly decide who is president through voting, but uh, they do indirectly influence um, the conversation. Many of TikTok's users are too young to vote. That didn't stop some of them from trying to influence the attendance at a rally held by the president. It can cause a ruckus or, or it can be used to spread disinformation, but we don't know exactly what extent that will actually have on the electoral outcome. While politicians sink most of their ad dollars into television, the research group eMarketer predicts the 2020 presidential candidates will spend more than a billion dollars on digital ads for the first time ever. And if you have a question for our Y guy, Jerry Carnes, send it to us on Facebook, Twitter, or email. 
Oh boy, we had a lot of activity with those storms that rumbled through earlier, but things are much quieter at this hour. But we had some incredible posts from our storm trackers. This from Guy Dockstetter as he sent his drone up over Paulding County. And you can see just those rain shafts coming out of those uh, towering cumulonimbus clouds. Really a beautiful sight over the horizon. Thank you, Guy, for posting that. And Kimberly Morris in Cherokee County earlier in Canton posting just how full her rain gauge was after the storms moved through over two inches of rain in her neighborhood with those very heavy downpours. So right now, the radar is looking a lot better. Now this is what we saw throughout the evening hours. A lot of lightning, literally hundreds of lightning strikes, some very heavy rain. We had reports of hail as large as quarters, actually as large as golf balls even in Troop County. So a very active uh, afternoon and evening. Things though have really quieted down. Just a few little pesky showers across the north side. Uh, we have a few showers moving towards Bremen along I-20 and still some activity to our south, but uh, the rainfall amounts were pretty impressive as these storms rolled on through. We saw as much as an inch, inch and a half in some locations, especially along that main corridor right through town and up through north central Georgia. Here in Atlanta, we even uh, picked up as much. This is a radar estimate, but uh, a little under three inches here, just northwest of Inman Park. Not sure that's exactly uh, accurate, but definitely had some heavy rain and some street flooding near uh, Sweet Auburn. I heard that there were some uh, there was some water rushing down the street, so uh, a lot of rain in a short period of time and things diminishing now. Even in South Georgia, things will be uh, getting a lot quieter overnight, but the air is soupy. You can feel it when you walk out there. Very humid. Dew points have risen up into that tropical range. The dry air is on retreat, so that sets the stage for more storms on our Thursday during the heat of the day anyway. Not in the morning so much. There may be a few pesky little showers here and there, but the more intense activity will be during the afternoon and evening. And right now we're not expecting anything organized in ter terms of severe. So high temperatures today, 93 in Canton, 95 in Dalton. Look at that, 98 in Athens and Rome. It was a hot one. And with the humidity, it felt even warmer than that. Felt like 100 degrees in Athens today. And right now we're still warm in Athens, 85 and still warm in Rome. But we've cooled it off in Atlanta, 76 degrees, 73 in Carrollton. So we're running some seven degrees cooler in Marietta and in Atlanta than we were at this time yesterday. So overnight. We'll see partly cloudy skies as those storms just kind of fade away. And a 6 on our wasometer for Thursday, once again with a 40% chance of showers and storms. So we'll see things quiet down overnight, a few clouds to start tomorrow. After lunchtime, yeah, maybe, maybe a thunderstorm or two, some showers, some heavy downpours during the evening and into the later evening hours. It'll, it'll quiet down again, just like today. And on Friday, about a 30% chance that we'll see those showers and storms popping up, mainly in the evening hours. And maybe a little later onset on Friday. So storms tapering off. We'll have more on our Thursday afternoon and evening and that'll continue through the weekend and into next week. So a 40% chance on Thursday, 30% chance Friday and Saturday. Look at those temperatures, mid 90s here in Atlanta for the weekend. And it's going to feel like it's more like 100 to 105. So it's going to be murky and humid and those rain chances continue into the middle of next week. Couldn't be more excited. We're going to celebrate this one for sure. And uh, yeah, we'll take that million dollars back to Georgia, why don't we? Oh, yeah. He picks up a million. Thousands of fans were at Bristol Motor Speedway, including the number nine fans who were on hand to witness NASCAR's most popular driver win his first all-star NASCAR race tonight. It was just the second time the all-star race has not been run in Charlotte. In 1986, it was at AMS, and Chase's dad, Bill, won it. Chase won stages two and three, didn't pit for the final 15 lap stage four. He was quick on the restart and held off Kyle Busch for the final 15 laps. Takes the checkered flag and the $1 million prize attached to winning the All-Star Race. To join dad and winning this event, um, heck, I mean, that, 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 that's, uh, that's not just special. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot, you know, a lot of years and a lot of history for everything to come full circle like that. It's pretty dang cool. It is pretty dang cool. All right, there are three days left to vote for this year's Atlanta Sports Awards. If you haven't, you need to go right now to 11alive.com slash sports awards to cast your vote. Thousands have already participated, and today we're spotlighting the nominees for Outstanding Coach.
Outstanding Coach, presented by The Home Depot. Frank DeBoer, Atlanta United. In his debut season as head coach, DeBoer led the Five Stripes to a double, the Campiones Cup and the U.S. Open Cup. Danny Hall, Georgia Tech Baseball. Hall led the Jackets to a 43-19 record, an ACC Coastal Division Championship, and was named ACC Coach of the Year. Brian Snitker, Atlanta Braves. The Braves won the NL East for the second straight year, tying the Yankees for most division titles in MLB history. Alex Glaze here with home team Brandon Leak of Extra 106.3. Uh, the home team in Hamilton show, you know him very well. Home team, let's talk about these nominees. Best coach, who you got? I'm going with Frank DeVore. Uh, guy comes along, he's got a tough, tough road to follow, talking about coming off of the championship season and a championship coach, and he's bringing in a completely different style of play. He gets off to a shaky start. Some of the players don't seem like they're very acclimated uh, and, and are liking what's going on early. They turn things around, and the next thing you know, they have a really good season. They set a, a record in, as far as points put up by a team or a club after winning a championship, 58 points, and I think turning that all around with the Rocky start makes him the coach of the year. I'm going to go Brian Snit. Uh, I like Snit. I, I, for whatever reason, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I can't get a feel if the Braves like Snit or not. He, it seems like he's on these one-year deals all the time, and they're just keeping him on a really tight rope. But he keeps performing. He got the Braves back to the postseason. He, he just seems to just get the best out of his team every year. And players love him. He gets the most out of them. And they're one Freddie Freeman elbow away from who knows what they'd do last year. But Brian Snicker did the best that he could do with the Braves last year. And I, that's why he's my coach of the year. Yeah, if not for that last game with the Braves, you know, you would ask the question, did he get everything he possibly could out of the team? Listen, he, he got everything out of Fulte. He game. got everything out of Fulte. Fulte just, you know, folded it was that, one. That it was one bad 15, 20 minute stretch. I'm a big Snitcher fan, too. I, man, I, I think he does such a great job. That is it for sports. We'll take a break. We're back right after this. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Well, now that we have lost our daytime heating, we're losing our storms. So things should be quieting down overnight tonight. But with the heat of the day tomorrow, the storms will be back. A 40% chance of showers and storms during the afternoon and evening. 30% chance Friday and Saturday. Look at those temperatures in the mid 90s as we head into the weekend and those chances for storms are continuing next week. Hey, we'll be over on 11 Alive in just a few minutes. Hope to see you there. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority 